Good morning. In Latin America, good afternoon in Spain. Welcome to a new workshop of the participatory group where cities debate about good practices, about public participation from an agreement between the City Council of Madrid and the National Distance Education University. Today we are very happy for one reason, because so far our experts' workshops were always promoted by us. We were always chasing after our experts and members of the participatory group, also outsiders of the participatory group with important or interesting expertise in public participation. We were always chasing them to share their expertise in our workshops. But this workshop was precisely the opposite. It was the government of Jalisco, who, together with other technicians that I will be introducing in a minute, who wanted to create this workshop. In the past two years, one of our main goals has been for our community of cities that want to boost public participation to feedback the expertise there are good practices back into the group. So congratulations, participatory group in that regard. What is the topic that will be addressed today? Well, our workshop includes Monica Ballesta, General Director for Public Participation and Monitoring in Jalisco, Mexico. How are you, Monica? Are you there in case you want to greet us? Good morning from Guadalajara, Jalisco, in Mexico. Thank you for being here. Also, Selene Michi is here, a director of assessment for public improvement in Jalisco, Guadalajara. Again, Selene, how are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. And also with us, Juan Murciano, who is an assessor and an economics professor in a Canadian university. How are you, Juan? Good afternoon. I'm really, I'm doing really well. I'm in Sevilla. Good afternoon. We've got all the speakers here. They've introduced themselves, but I will let them tell you about the dynamic, the content and the topic that will be addressed in this workshop. We've come here to learn a lot about participatory assessment processes and control of evaluation assessment. Sorry, it's one of the big challenges that all municipalities face in terms of participation. It's all yours. You've got the floor. Thank you so much, Marta Lora. Thank you to all of you with us today. My name is Monica Ballesca. We are very excited to share with you a little bit about our expertise, lessons learned, but we want to do this in a kind of a different way. We want to show you through different activities what we are all about. So our agenda today is quite ambitious time-wise and in terms of activities. But we are very excited to be here. Allow me to share my screen so that we can get started. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. As Marta Lora was saying, and as we were talking with Susana and Luis, based on our experience, what have we learned in terms of public participation in assessment processes? These are, are the four members of our team together with other colleagues in our team. It's not just us. We have carried out all the different activities, but we are very lucky to be the ones here today with you. In the meantime, I'd like to start by asking you what character on the screen most ref or better reflects your mood? Share the number on the screen. Are you a one? Are you a two? Three? Four, five, what's your mood today? How are you feeling? 
as we start this meeting. Well, we've seen a number three, great. Perfect, thank you. Luis is a four and a five. We hope that you'll feel better at the end. Four, again, Marta, Laura and Cristina, excellent. A two, who is a two? Cristina, hopefully you will relax throughout the session in the upcoming hour and a half. Thank you so much. Thank you, Antonio, for your message to Cristina says she's probably a I'm probably a three. I'd say the whole team is between three and four. We are very enthusiastic. We are very excited about sharing our experience and hopefully all of you will feel a three at the end of the session. I, that's our expectation. Hopefully we'll achieve it. Anyway, now what we are doing to start sessions is a virtual check because we're all important in this participatory activity. So we always check people's moods at the start. This is one of the resources we use. To continue, I would like to ask you to please use this tool called Mentimeter. Probably most of you know this tool by now. Please share the link on the chat, colleagues, so that people can click on the link. Again, we will be sharing the link on the chat shortly. I'm sorry, because there are always technical problems. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Mitchell. I can see it now on the chat. Anyway, and also tell me where you're coming from. You can also scan the QR code on your phone if you wish. Either you click on the link on the chat or you access the tool directly through the QR code. Sorry for interrupting, Monica. I've clicked, but it says that there are no active questions. I don't know if we need to enable any option. Give me a second. That's precisely what I'm doing now. Refresh the page. And now, place a dot on your country, the country where you are joining us from. I see people from Mexico. Thank you. Chile, Argentina. Thank you for being here. From Spain, obviously. Most participants are Spanish today. I can't see the image refreshing. No? Is it on the screen or, or not? I've been able to pin my location properly. I've pinned Madrid. Me too. Yes, but we can't see it on the results page. Can you see it now? Yes, perfect. Wonderful. We see it now. So, four colleagues from Chile, four from Argentina, eight from Spain, and at least three Mexicans. The results are not on the screen because we are here as speakers behind the scenes. The, these are our figures of participation for today. This part of the check, the initial check, helps us identify where participants are coming from on the map. 19 participants as we see at the bottom right. This is part of the exercise. Now refresh the page again. Go back to the Mentimeter because we would like to ask you now about whether you have already participated in an assessment exercise before. Allow me to exit the Mentimeter. We always have certain challenges with technology, certain issues. Again, what I want to ask you here 
is whether any of you have participated before in assessment processes. I can't hear Monica anymore. Her camera is frozen. Yes, but I was able to answer the two questions on the tool. It's been working really well for me. Me too. Monica, are you there? I don't know if it's my Wi-Fi connection that's failing. There you go. Those are the results. Perfect. Have you ever participated in a public policy assessment exercise? As we can see, it's 50-50 in the room. That's great. It's fantastic to know that there are people in this session that have participated in these kinds of activities that will be able to provide their input throughout the session. For those of you who have participated before, your expertise is really important. But for those of you who've never participated in one of these exercises, your perspective is also very valuable. Let me close the screen now with 18 participants and let's go back to the presentation. As I was saying, and my colleagues too, from the call, the objective for today's session is to share and dialogue about our expertise, our experience in terms of practices, methodology in the participatory assessment of public policies carried out in Jalisco, Mexico, using some online or virtual techniques. As we were saying, there's always an initial check to kickstart this really ambitious agenda. There are six different parts. Again, to start with a check in getting to know the participants, their experience. Then we move on to a definition of what a public policy assessment is and the theory framework for the assessment of public policies. Then there's a 20 minute exercise in small sessions, if Zoom allows, with a dynamic that I will later explain that we go back to the plenary session to share input and their experience with this, this dynamic. Then we pause and talk about what a participatory assessment and what the advantages are to continue with a 15 minute presentation of our experience in Jalisco and then we finish with a dialogue. So feel free at any point to make your remarks, ask your questions. Please feel free to interrupt us, to comment, to ask questions. Now I would like to ask you what assessing public policies means. In one or two words, what does assessing mean? Can you share with us what you consider assessing means in terms of public policies? Let me enable the question on Mentimeter. Could you please help me to share the link on the chat? Let me enable the platform. Can you summarize in one, two words what assessing public policies means? I can't see any link on the chat. Me neither. It says there are no active questions 
I think it might be my problem. There you go. Now we can answer. Perfect, thank you. Could you please share your screen, Monica? Yes, just give me a second to make sure it's working. Yes, it's working, perfect. Very interesting words are coming up. It's about creating, monitoring, indicators, satisfying needs, qualifying, auditing, analyzing with criteria. It's using methods, looking at results for other people. It's about auditing. I cannot contribute. Oh, there you go. Antonio, if you prefer, you can share it on the chat. I was going to write impact on citizens. Exactly. It's about generating an impact for citizens. Virginia was saying that it's also about compliance of public policy. It's to somehow measure objectives, results. It's about accountability, proposing improvements. It's getting to know things better. It's about comparing. It's about building capabilities, satisfying needs. It's about designing. The most representative terms or the ones that come up the most are creating indicators Assessing and getting to know, understanding. That's precisely what we feel assessing is. I would like to share three key ideas. For us, according to our experience, it's about reaching agreements. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm having some internet connection problems. We can hear you well. Would you like us to help you share? Yes, please, Sele. So one of the first ideas that we wanted to share is a sentence from Joan Subirac from a conference we had to analyze assessment exercises carried out in Jalisco. Joan Subirac said that the exercise of assessing from governments is both an exercise and a practice of democratic quality and it is about creating quality criteria not only in the government, but democratic quality in a country, in a society. Also, a colleague of ours, an academic from the CIE, and she's a counselor in the National Council for the Assessment of Social Policy called Claudia Maldonado, based on the text of Aaron Bildavsky, an expert in public participation, said that these are instruments to tell power the truth. It's about uh, having a better understanding and better tools to say what's going on about the exercise of powers in a government. And finally, it's about the remark that Gonzalo Hernández Licona made saying evaluation or assessment is a political process with technical components or elements that aspires to improve public management. This sentence by Gonzalo Hernández Licona highlights precisely what it is. It's a technical process, but it's also about management, management of stakeholders, tensions, 
managing expectations, but it aspires to improve public policy and public management. Let's move on to the next slide. Why do we assess? Our theory tells us that there are two main goals. One of them is to create that social knowledge and this is called a symbolic use assessment. Within this goal, what we want is to generate, to build capacities in a society to increase democratic quality because accountability about the use of resources and decisions are the most important thing. Also creating mechanism for citizen participation and a co-creation, co-construction and co-design of these instruments. On the other hand, we've got the conceptual theoretical goal of creating a practical knowledge. This is called the instrumental use of assessment, creating these kind of capacities. The main goal of which is an improvement of public management. It considers that assessments are a way to test government hypotheses that are public policies. A public policy at the end of the day is about an intervention in order to change a less than desirable situation happening in a society. Assessing means testing this intervention, this hypothesis. Within this instrumental use, it's also about creating evidence for what's working and what isn't. An assessment is a mechanism to provide evidence, to create evidence that something is working or not, and creating knowledge and having a better understanding of the results generated throughout the intervention. The results sometimes are not the desired results and you see an impact that goes beyond our expectations, things that we hadn't even foreseen when designing the public policy. So conceptually, these are the two main uses of an assessment, the symbolic use, generating social knowledge, mainly through transparency, accountability and citizen involvement, and the instrumental use, which is about generating practical knowledge to allow for an improvement of public policy. Next slide, Mitchell. Conceptually, there are different types of evaluations or assessments. There are diagnosis assessments. There's also a design assessment. It's about assessing the design of the public policy, how objectives are defined, the target groups, the strategies, the paths for action. There are also coverage assessments, implementation and process assessments. And the most well-known assessments are those that assess design or impact. In practical terms, both in Mexico and other countries, the ideal approach when assessing is bottom-up. We start with the diagnosis and the design, then we assess coverage and processes Later on, we reach the results and impact assessments. The most well-known types of assessments are those focused on results and impact, but these are the most complex ones and they require a higher understanding, better conditions, better access to information about public policies for them to be carried out operators and political stakeholders in our cases we are always asked for impact assessments but as I was saying impact assessments are the icing on the cake 
truly the icing on the cake because ideally you would need to carry out the other, the lower half kind of assessments before moving on to assessing impacts and results. This is the conceptual and practical framework of assessment. Now we will move on to smaller working rooms for the next activity. Juan, can you give us the instructions for this activity? Assessing is about having a verdict with all the different dimensions around public policies that Monica has mentioned. Assessing is complex. We do it every day. Half of the group has participated in assessments before. The other half hasn't. So together, we would like to share a scenario. We want to define an anthem. An anthem that represents global peace, world peace. So we will split the plenary session in small groups and you need to choose a song. Debate with your smaller groups to choose your favorite song as a anthem for global peace. Put them in order of preference. You are kind of a jury in this competition to choose an anthem for global peace. So give us your reasoning and place them in order numbers one, two, and three. After that, we will quickly come back to the plenary session to share our reasons. Is that clear? Are there any questions? We are doing really well in terms of time. Sorry, we need to choose an anthem per per small room. You will be provided with three songs. Inside your group, establish an order from the best to the worst song as an anthem for world peace. But you need to justify why. What's the reasoning behind the order of songs you have agreed on? But we need to reach an agreement per group. Perfect. <laughs>